Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, you know, when I was uh, in, invited here this evening, uh, I did not hesitate for two seconds. I uh, agreed immediately, didn't I, Clarence? <laughs> And uh, for a couple of reasons, well, three actually. The first one being the same reason you're here, who's gonna pass up an opportunity to meet and hang out with Morley Safer, right? <laughs> By the way, you had a huge influence on me. May I make a little detour from the subject tonight? A huge influence. You started... I hope it won't embarrass me in some way. <laughs> you started uh, on 60 Minutes in 1970, correct? Yes. That same year, I got my first job here in Montreal at CJAD, and I would watch you, and uh, I learned not just about journalism and storytelling and interviewing, I learned a great deal about authenticity, that you can, you can be fair, but you can still have an attitude without striking one. <laughs> um, the second reason I uh, accepted immediately was I had this wave of, of nostalgia because so many of the paths of my life intersect right here, and I mean literally right here. This is my alma mater. This is the city in which I grew up, and this is where I began my career. But I think the... Uh, the third reason, and this is this is a biggie. I have, I have absolutely no scholarship uh, on the on the subject of looted culture and and stolen heritage, but it is part of my my DNA. Um, my parents were the sole survivors of their respective families. Um, the Nazis murdered everyone else. Daddy was. Uh, liberated from uh, Theresien, Theresienstadt, and Mami Auschwitz. They met after the war. I was born in Prague, in Czechoslovakia. And uh, uh, when, I, when I think about how these two people were tested, it's beyond anything I, I can imagine. First the fascists, and then the communists. So they grabbed me and anything else they could carry and ran looking for a country that would take them. And that's how we ended up here in Montreal in 1951. Uh, <laughs> we were refugees, but then they called us DPs. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that's, and, and Mummy was determined that we weren't going, to, her children weren't going to wear the mantle of her deep pain and and, and sorrow, so her way of negotiating the past was, as a lot of people did, silence and denial. But uh, <coughs> the past always has a way of bubbling up, right? So now uh, my mummy, who is in her 90s, uh, is afraid to go to sleep, and she wakes up screaming in the night, and it breaks my heart. And that is why, because this conference ultimately is about truth and justice and remembrance, so that's why I want to tell you how honored I am to be here with you tonight. And I am curious how your background, growing up in Toronto in the 30s, uh, before we received our international reputation as being a burg that's cultured and classy, uh, <laughs> how that experience growing up in Toronto informed your perception of this whole issue? Well, I, I was, uh, I would, I'd been interested in the arts as a kid. And at one point, I uh, thought that was going to be my future until my father pointed out how broke I would be for the rest of my life. Uh, and as a little kid, uh, <coughs> They, they uh, I guess I must have been in about the third grade or fourth grade. Came out. Uh, they selected a kid from each of the public schools for to go to the Art Gallery of Ontario for uh, Saturday morning uh, art classes. And uh, so, I, 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 in short, I, I've been interested in visual arts certainly since childhood. And you should know Morley is an artist as well. well. <laughs> <laughs> 